sons and servants. Are you a son, a servant, or a friend? Am I a son, a servant, or a friend of God? It looks like it's contradicting, right? Because most people say we are servants of God. There are those who will say, I am a friend of God. And those who will also say, I am a child of God or I am a son of God. So question is, who am I? Who are you? Amongst those three. So that is what we are going to look at very briefly. And as we are going through, kindly pay clean attention, clear attention to what uh, the Holy Spirit will be speaking to you. And I'm so sure you are going to walk out this place fulfilled. Sons, servants, and friends. John 8.35 Message Bible, John 8 35, Message Bible, then Romans 8. Write these scriptures down so that we will flow together. There are not many today. John, Romans 8 15, Amplified and Message Bible, then Galatians 4 6 to 7, Amplified Classic and Message Bible. Then the same Galatians 3, verse 26, Amplified Classic. Then we will go, we will go back again to Romans 8, but this time around verse 14, Amplified Classic. Then Hosea 110, Amplified Classic. Then Romans 8, verse 17, KJV. I hope I'm not too fast for you. Romans 8, 17, KJV. Then Luke 15, 17 to 31. We will read it in three translations. Luke 15, 17 to 31. Amplified classic, TLB, and Message Bible. Then Ecclesiastes 10, 5 to 7. We will read it in five translations. If we will have the time to read all that. Is that okay? So Ecclesiastes 10, 5 to 7 is just two, two scriptures. Amplified, message, TLB, GNT, and the voice. Five translations just to get the juice out of those two scriptures and uh, finally we will read Romans 8 again verse 19 so you can tell we will dwell more on Romans 8 but maybe in different in different uh, versions all right let's begin with John 8:35 in Message Bible, look on the screens and let us read together. In this place, we read everyone together. One, two, three, everyone. A slave is a transient who can't come and go at will. The son, though, has an established position. The run of the house. Give us in amplified classic, the same John. Sorry I didn't mention that when I began to give. The same in amplified classic. Everyone, now a slave does not remain in an household permanently forever. The son of the house does remain forever. Does it mean the son is, does not make mistakes? Or does it mean the slave is made of a different clay? 
these are two human beings, but one has a permanent residence, and the other one comes and goes. Go back to the message Bible. One has a permanent residence. The other one comes and goes. The son is established. But the slaves comes and goes. Yes, he might be the most beloved servant. But he doesn't have a permanent place in the house. Or in the heart of the father. So when we begin to associate ourselves as slaves before God, we are literally telling God we don't have any permanence in you. We come so that we can finish our work and we get our wage. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So anyone that is praying, God, I am serving you so that you do for me. They are servants. Because to them, it's all a, ma a matter of when I do something, you will in return do something back into my own life. Write this down. Satan's greatest weapon is to have you live a confused life about your identity. Satan's greatest weapon is to have you live confused about your identity. Your placement in God. If Satan manages to make you talk, behave, move like a slave before your father, he has already stolen your identity. Your true identity. Because how you will associate with your father, it will be slavery. It will be servantly. That's why Satan will overwhelm someone with doubt about their sonship in God. To a point even they begin to doubt their own identity in God. So Satan over, overwhelms God's children with doubt about their sonship in God. To a point even them, they, a son will begin to behave as a slave. Give us that Romans 8, 15 amplified and then message. Romans 8, 15 Amplified then message. Everyone, let's read. For you have not received a spirit of what? Slavery. Leading again to fear of God's judgment. There are Christians living with fear. The moment you begin to live in fear about what will happen at the last day, you are already a slave. There are people who are afraid. If I was to exit this world, where will I end? Where will I end? They are not sure of their tomorrow. They are not sure of their arrival before the throne of their father. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons. The spirit Producing what? By which we joyfully cry, Abba, Father. There is a teaching I did. It's called uh, Knowing God as your Father. And this one will be good for you. Note it down. Knowing God as a Father. Because you will begin to relate with God from a place of fatherhood sonship. Father and son relationship. Does that mean sons don't make mistakes? They do make a lot of them. Does that mean sons don't break windows of their father's houses? They break very constantly. But question is, does the father severe the relationship? 
Does the father say from today, I disown you. Because of this sin, because of this mistake, you are no longer my son. But a slave does not have the same privilege as the son. If I were you, I would write this down. A son can, despite the mistakes, a son cannot lose the relationship. But a slave and a servant can lose the relationship. What a privilege we have as sons to God. Adopted as sons. Meaning no matter what you do, the relationship cannot end. Your mistakes cannot end the relationship. Your sin cannot end the relationship. You are shortcoming. You are downfall. Cannot end that relationship. It's a relationship that is bound forever. Give us now in Message Bible. Let's eat the point home. Everyone, let's read together. Look at the screens. This resurrection life you received from God is not timid. Grave tending life. It's advantageously expectant. Greeting God with a child like, what's next, Papa? I have already seen what's next. I am already your son. What next? Would you reject me? Would you abandon me? Because I didn't know what to do. Would you allow me to take the wrong turn? Even though I was hearing your voice, I, but I didn't understand it. Ay, 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 ay. Children make mistakes. Some they will do. Whether you want them or not, they will still do. But you won't hate them because they did that mistake. We were somewhere this evening with my family and uh, in the verge of almost us preparing ourselves to leave, so we were just taking a meal before, before we could uh, go home to prepare so that we'd be in the service. And uh, a parent came somewhere and uh, left their young boy and told the boy, please go and swim. But go to the to the baby, to the baby swimming pool side. And the young man looked and saw, I believe, everyone, every small child is in the big pool. I'm bigger than these children. Let me go also and test the waters where the fun is. And uh, I, we don't know how he ended up into the deep end. This is someone who has never been to any swimming pool. This is someone who has never swam. The coaches, the guards, and everyone around, nobody knew this person cannot swim. And the guy drowned. And for several, either minutes or so moments, the guy was already lifeless. The young boy was pulled from the water, literally lifeless. Everybody, the women began to gather. Nobody knows what to say. Nobody knows what to do. And I was seated with mama and we were watching. When the boy was, they were trying to bring the guy back to life. And immediately a voice said to me, don't bother, the child is dead. Immediately I, I was gripped with a fear that I can't tell. But because of what I had, I say not into my presence. God, you say no one can die. Mama is here, she can tell you. I say nobody can die in my presence. And I walked straight. The guy that was trying to do the, is it the CPR or what do they do? Press it so that the water can come. The boy, no movement. Pa! Water gushed out. And the guy that was doing the feet said, ah, it's okay. Let me go. And the, the boy was left there. Because of course you know what happens when you have been in water and almost you are almost leaving the world. What happens? Little by little, within under minutes, the boy was walking by himself. When picked back, started looking for the parent. 
because the barrenness was nowhere to be seen. Meaning a parent would have come and told, oh, we are sorry. Your boy is no more. There is no fear with God. There is no fear with God. God has not given us timidity. And I'm not saying, I'm telling you this. I was talking to one sometime, I don't know when we were talking, and I told her, in this service, people see visions. In this service, people hear God's voice. In this service, people can prophesy to one another. Accurately. And she was like, ah, ah, how? There is no superiority in this kingdom. We are all sons. We are all same everything. Same spirit in pastor, same spirit in you. Same spirit, same anointing, same grace, same everything. Question is, what, are, what is at work in you? What have you desired to put to work? When I went back to mama, mama told me, I was so sure, nothing can happen. Nothing. We left the place tense. And including all the coaches, tense atmosphere. What would have happened if the child? <laughs> oh my goodness. Say with me, death has no power where I am involved. Say it boldly, death has no power where I am involved. Give us Galatians. Listen, you need to carry that kind of boldness. And only sons carry that kind of boldness. Servants can't. Friends can't. I told you on Sunday, that song, I, I, am, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. It is not your song. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You should rise beyond I am a friend. Galatians 6. Everybody, let's read Amplify Classic and Message. Everyone. And because you really, you know, there are words I see and I first stay there. And because me, I am really a son. I am really a son. It's, it is not a matter of guesswork. And because you really are his sons, God has sent the Holy Spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Verse 7. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, a bond servant, but a son. And if a son, then it follows that you are an heir by the aid of God through Christ. Give us now the next translation. Everyone, you can tell for sure that you are now fully adopted as his own children because God sent the spirit of his son into our lives crying out Papa, Father doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation with God make it plain that you are not a slave but a child and if you are a child you are also an heir with complete access to the inheritance. Meaning I don't pray for the inheritance. I have access to it. No, I don't pray to have access to for what my father has. I have direct access. I have complete access to what my father has. Oh, no, some people ask. Someone asked, since God did not have a wife, where did he get a son? This scripture, this Galatians should be an answer. Anyone the Spirit of God enters becomes a son. 
So you don't become a son because a male and a female chromosome came together. No. Any, anybody, anybody that God enters, that person becomes the son of God. That's why when God entered into the body that was prepared before the foundations of the earth, now we had the Son of God. Hello. Galatians 3, 26. Amplified. Everyone, for in Christ Jesus... You are all sons of God through faith. Romans 8.14 Just to affirm the thing. Everyone, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Hosea 1.10 Amplified Classic Everyone, let's read. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. And instead of it being said to them, you are not my people, it shall be said to them, sons of the living God. And of course it is confirmed in Romans 926. Of course, we are not going to do to go there. So, does this mean since I am a son, I don't serve? Hello? Since servants serve are known for service, since I'm a son, does it mean I don't serve? I need answers. <laughs> Does it mean I don't become a servant? Since, Pastor, you have taught us that we are not supposed to call ourselves servants of God. Since I'm a son, I'm different from a servant. Do I serve? Write this down. We are sons who are servant hearted, not servant minded. We are, serv we are sons who are servant hearted, not servant minded. There's a big difference between serving God as a son and serving God as a servant. Sons serve from rest. Servants serve so that they can rest. Sons serve from rest. They don't struggle to serve. They don't serve to prove a point. They don't serve because there is a wage at the end of the day. They serve from a resting place. Because the kingdom they are serving is the kingdom they are part of. They are not serving because they will go to another kingdom. But servants serve with a mentality. After I serve here for five years, I can invest in another place for another five years. Sons serve from rest. Servants serve so that they may rest. Why do we serve from rest? We are sons that hold equal shares with our father. Oh my goodness, that's a big one, right? We hold equal shares. I'm not talking about the shares that uh, impeach somebody. I'm talking about our kingdom shares. You and your father have equal shares of the kingdom. He deemed it so fit for you and him to hold equal shares. That's why the Bible did not say we are joint heirs. We, we, no, I mean, we, we are co-heirs. We are joint. Give us that Romans. 
Romans 8, 17 KJV. Oh my goodness. Listen, Leah. Your shares and the shares of Jesus, they are equal. He does not own higher shares and you lower shares. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's read this together. Romans 1, 2, 3. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs. If we, are, we have a joint account, it means no one withdraws who, who has a higher stake than the other. But if we say we are core co-heirs. We co-own this company. It may mean someone has a bigger share than someone else. But when we say joint, yes, I pray that you understand this simple logic. It is as simple as I'm pushing it. You and Jesus equal shares. If Jesus was to say, I own the entire world, you stand and say, I own the entire world. Jesus will say, you are right. Because we run the world together equally. That's why now you don't begin to see yourself as a lesser being. You don't begin to see yourself as a lesser shareholder of the kingdom of your father. That's why you will serve God with every being and every energy you carry. Why? It is my kingdom as much as is the kingdom of my father. Your shares are no less than the shares of Jesus. We are sons that hold equal shares with our father. Therefore, we serve not to get wages. Servants serve. Slaves serve waiting for wages. Sons serve because we serve because our empire must succeed. Because it's a joint empire. It's a joint business. So it must succeed. God has done his part. I must do my part because it must succeed. Romans 8, 17, KJV. Oh, we have already read, read that one. Oh, Radaba. You see, men that are serving with expectation of what they want to get at the end of their service, at the end of their kingdom service, they carry servant mentality. They are servants in mind. To them, God, after I do this, you will do it for me. So as I'm serving him, I'm looking at the price. What my motivation is not I am part and parcel of the kingdom. My motivation is what I will get. What is set ahead of me. So every time I pray, I am not praying with a son's mentality. I am praying with a servant's mentality. And that's where so many people lose it. Write this. Servants serve with an expectation of a pain. Sons serve with success of their father's kingdom in mind. Servants serve with an expectation of a pay. Sons serve with success of their father's kingdom in their heart and in their mind. Number two, servants serve as long as there is convenience. What is the convenience? Wages. Answers to the prayers. Answers to the seeds they have sown. Answers to what they have done in the kingdom of their God. But sons serve. Whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Servants serve with wages in view with answers to their prayers in view. 
Number three, about servants. Servants serve with anxiety. They are anxious to serve because they do not know when their ground will give in. So there is a lot of anxiety as they are serving. When will I be fired? When will this thing, will it truly come to pass? They are always anxious of quicksand situations. Anytime I can be fired, anytime I can lose what I have served for, for all these years. But sons are settled because they have surety of the ground they are standing upon. Sons are not anxious of anything. They are not looking for any inheritance because, because they are already part and parcel of the kingdom. Servants do everything to please the master. <laughs> Servants are men pleasers. Write this. A servant is an outsider, but a son is an insider. Remember the story of where most people quote about where God said, Abraham is my friend. And everybody thought that is the highest. Now, now I'm showing you a higher realm. A higher realm. Abraham was a friend of God, but you are a son of God. So, is the friend of your father in a better position to inherit what your father has? So, it doesn't matter how close they can get. Let them get so close and actually walk every day together. You, and your father, the relationship is bound. The relationship is bound. Therefore, you don't serve God with any jealousy about anyone that God is doing anything for them. You are not comparing yourself with the friends of your father. <laughs> Neither do you compare yourself with those who are serving with servant mentality. They are all his people. Jesus. Friends and servants don't have intimacy with the father as a son will have. Friends and servants don't have intimacy relationship with the father as the son would have. Sons have exclusive rights that servants and friends don't have. I have an ex I have exclusive rights as a son. When your father speaks to you as a son, he speaks without hiding anything. But servants, the son speaks in parables. Oh, I, I hope someone will catch where I'm heading. To the servants, he speaks in parables. To the sons, he speaks expressingly. There is no hiding of anything. Do you remember what Jesus said to the disciples? One day the disciples came to Jesus and they asked him, Master, why do you speak in parables always? And also we see in the days of old, in the days of Isaiah, Jeremiah, they said that the master that is coming, without a parable, he will not speak to the people. But to the sons, he speaks without hiding anything. Please, I hope, I thought Jason would have pulled up that scripture. Who has it? Oh, 
Was this here? Uh, is it Isaiah? Was it? Give it to us in Mark. Mark 4.34. Mark 4.34 Amplified Classic. Sorry? Yes, yes, yes. But still Mark the same. Thank you. What does the Matthew... Okay, everyone. He did not tell them anything without, but privately to his disciples. Those who are peculiarly his own. He explained everything. So, if God is to begin to speak to you, he needs to be sure. Are you a servant? Or are you a son? Can I express myself to you without holding back anything? Can I give you the secrets of my children? Can I give you the secrets of my sons? And I will not feel ashamed. I gave you their lives in their secrets. That's why it is very disturbing. A man of God stands in front or a prophet stands in front of a child of God. And God whispers to them something that is very secretive and very private for them. And they blow it in the open. No, no, no. It's not everything God will tell you that he will tell you, say it. I have told you that every prophecy, if it is from God, it will, number one, preserve your dignity. Oh, I see young lady, you have made several abortions. Is it necessary? Oh, I see when you are in fourth form, you did this and this. I see your university, you did this and this and this. No. Our God is very dignified. Very dignified. Mama, sometimes she will tell me, I know you saw this and this. Why did you not say? And I tell her, because I was not meant to say it. It is meant to be for me. And I explain. In fact, on Sunday, oh my goodness, if, if, if you didn't feel anything on Sunday, then I think something is very wrong with your Christianity. Because the presence was so tangible. Mam Lea, do you agree with me? Very tangible. You, don't, you didn't get anything. You didn't have an encounter. It means your heart is very hard. You need to begin to pray, God, give me a heart of flesh. Take away the heart of stone from me. He explains, give it in message Bible. Oh my goodness, this time is moving too fast. Everyone, let's read. He was never without a story. To the rest, the father speaks in stories. He gives a lot of stories. When he was alone with his disciples, he went over everything. Sorting out the tangles and tying the notes. Meaning the rest, what they received was tangled. The rest received things that were tied in notes. But when it came to his own, everything was untangled. The notes were untied. May God never speak to you in a way that you cannot understand. May God speak to you expressively. Whereby if you are taking a route and he says, my daughter, my son, take left. You take left. Because he knows you understand his voice. Listen, only sons understand the voice of their father. Strangers, friends, and servants don't have an understanding of the voice of the father. Oh, Rabba Lagada. There's a scripture I was looking for. Oh, Rabba Lagada. 
Shakabada. All right. Once I get it, I will uh, give it to you. Give us Luke. The father speaks without hiding anything to the sons. But to servants, the father speaks in parables. Give us that Luke. It's a long reading, so let's read it very fast. Let's see if we can finish this today. Everybody, one, two, three, look at the screens. Let's read together. Then when he came to himself, this is the story of the prodigal son. How many higher servants of my father have enough food? I hope every one of us understands this was a parable of Jesus, who is God, trying to explain to us about how he views sons and servants. Are we together? So, how many higher servants of my father have enough food and even food to spare, but I am perishing, dying here of anger. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Just make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and came to his own father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity and tenderness for him. And he ran and embraced him and kissed him. Who ran? It is not the son. The father ran. He has seen the son that was lost. Continue. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. I no longer deserve to be recognized as a son of yours. What was the response of the father? He began to tell the boy, Oh, you naughty guy. I knew, I knew life will eat you and you will come back. I knew life will, will, will finyanga you very well and you will find your way back home. The same way, listen, this is why so many Christians are taught when you come to pray, before you can, your father can listen to you, begin to confess. But Jesus told us how nonsense that is. Oh, Father, forgive me. I know you are about to ask money from God. Then you begin to, to confess. Father, the sins that I know, the sins that I don't know, the sins that I will not know, Lord, all of them, put them together. Forgive me. But the reason why I came is because I need money. You are not a son. The father, but the father said to his born servants, Hiya. Where is the correction? Why are you not correcting this naughty guy that picked his inheritance before time? Why are you not telling him in front of everyone else? No, no, this is my son. And as a son, he has exclusive rights and he just used one of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. We usually see that this guy did wrong. But in the eyes of the father, there is no single wrong. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. He just rose up and realized everything my father has belongs to me. And I have equal rights to demand what is mine. If you read, when he demanded, there was no argument. And the father said, my child has grown up. Now he understands that this car I bought belongs to him. Well, whether he waits until my death, it is still his. Son, take what is yours. But when life beat the guy and he came back, the father did not have time to rebuke and correct the guy. What was the father? He said to the servants, ignore what he has said. Bring quickly the best robe, the festive robe of honor and put on him and give him a ring for his hand and sandals for his feet. Next verse. And bring out 
that wheat fatted calf and kill it and let us reveal and feast and be happy and make merry because this son, this my son was dead and he is alive again he was lost and he is found and they began to reveal and feast and make merry yes continue all the way to 31 but his older son who carried a servant mentality stepped in was in the field and as he returned this listen this is how to know people with servant mentality inside churches they are always angry about the good that has happened to other people that they deemed they don't deserve it there are places you will go you will hear people say Leah just came the other day we have been in this church for 14 years since this ministry began and she just walked in. We know where she came from. We know her evil ways. We know how I think I shared this with you. There are people who think because they just joined ministry, they don't deserve attention from their father. Oh, let so and so because they have been in this church for long. I can listen to them. I can pay attention to them. No, that is not the way God has created everything to be. I was telling Anne the story of the laborers that were called into the field. Some in the morning, some in the noon time, some in the evening, some the last hour. And when it came to pay, those who came in the morning saw how much those who came for one hour were paid. They began to brag. Ah, if these ones who have just come to church just the other day, they got saved just the other day. They don't know if how to pray in tongues well. They do rogobo shoko. The one Papa was teaching us. Robo, 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 robo. They have been paid this handsomely. They began to brag. Ah, wait, it comes to our turn. And when it came to their pay, they all began to grumble. That's why, please, oh my goodness, be careful of people that brag with their, how many years they have been serving God. Be careful. I, I know what I'm saying. Be careful of people that tell you I have been in this ministry for this number of years. They are your greatest downfall. Oh, you did not hear me. Don't ever pay attention to people that brag of their service. Because if they tell you their story, what will come next is, I'm still waiting on God. I'm still waiting. And they will quench you. There are days we used to believe. If you are saved for 10 years, may have been saved for 5 years. You, you, I should compare my result with your result. Ah, what a calamity. No, God has not called you and began to put you in a balance. Let's read on. And he returned and came near the house. He had music and dancing. And having called one of the servant boys to him, he began to ask, what is this, what this meant? And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed that wheat fatted calf because he has received him back safe and well. But the elder brother was angry with deep seated wrath and resolved not to go in. How comes so and so came the other day? Always Papa is calling them. Always pastor is calling them. They are the ones always papa or pastor is laying hands upon. Me have been in this church for these years. But even papa doesn't have my number. <laughs> the son that didn't know his rights. Then his father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, look, this many years I have served you. Servants have complained of their many years of service because they count them. I have been giving, I have been serving, I have been coming for cases, I've been praying, I've been obeying, I've been doing this. Servant mentality. Sons don't have those kind of explanations. 
many years. And I have never disobeyed your command. Yet, you never gave me so much as a little kid that I might reveal a feast and be happy and make merry with my friends. Continue. But when this son of yours arrived, who has devoured your estate with immoral women, you have killed for him that wheat fatted calf. 31. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine. What, did, what was he trying to say? Did you ever ask? It was at your disposal. Did you ever ask for it? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Servants are afraid of everything. Servants are the kind that go to hide that one talent. And when the master comes back, they say, I know how hardworking you are. And I didn't want to lose only this one thing you gave me. Give us in Amplified, the message. And I think we might be forced to end. Okay, we have 10 minutes. Everyone, help me read very loud. Everyone, that brought him to his senses. He said, all those farm ants working for my father, sit down to three meals a day. And here I am, starving to death. I'm going back to my father. I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son. Take me as a hired hand. He got right up and went home to his father. When he was still a long way off, his father saw him. His heart pounded. He ran out, embraced him and kissed him. The son started his speech. Please, don't begin speeches with God. Some people think the more I will explain my issues to God, the more he will understand. He understood them before you came. He knew each and every one of them. That's why God is not looking for stories from those who are so-called backslidden. Because we don't have anyone backslidden. The son started his speech. Father, I've sinned against. Can you remember where the speech was? was made, he wrote it before he came. There are people who come to God with prearranged prayers. Prearranged prayers. When I begin to pray, this is how I, I will, you have a servant mind. A son does not, oh my goodness, our children don't think twice before they begin to ask what they want. The moment they want it, they want it. There is no prearranged speech. Oh, let me prepare a speech on what I will tell mommy and daddy on what I need. That is not your child. That is someone else's child. <laughs> Children understand. I don't need any speech. I don't need any eloquence. I don't need to package myself before my father. Father, I have sinned against God. I have sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. Continue. The son, but the father wasn't. That's what I wanted you to, to see. The father wasn't listening. He was calling to the servants. I am, my son has come. I am addressing the servants. Oh my Alagada. Quick, bring a clean set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then get a grain. Oh, Calabragada. There's something I've seen. Go back. Go back. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Put the family ring. Ah, I don't care whether he lost it. I don't care what happened to his past. I am not dealing with his past. Make him look like part of this family. Give him that authority again. And I believe this day, God is saying, put that ring, put that family ring on that lady. Put that family ring on that man. Put that family ring on that young boy. Yet that young girl. Father, give me that family ring. Because I had lost it. Because I doubted 
our relationship. I have doubted our connection. And Santos to his feet. Next verse. Then get a grain fed ifa and roast it. We are going to feast. We are going to have a wonderful time. My son is here. Given up for dead and now alive. Given up for lost and now found. And they began to have a wonderful time. All this time his older son was out in the field. Ah, what are you doing in the field? What are you doing in the field? When the day's work was done, he came in. As he approached the house, he heard the music and dancing. Calling over one of the houseboys, he asked, what's going on? He told him, your brother came home. Your father has ordered a feast. Barbecued beef because he has, he has him home safe and sound. Then the older brothers talked off in an angry sack and refused to join in. His father came out and tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't listen. The son said, look how many years I've stayed here serving you, never giving you one moment of grief. But have you ever thrown a party for me and my friends? Listen, there's a teaching I didn't, maybe my wife will remind me. There's a teaching I said, God wants you exactly as you are, without makeup. And don't use makeup with God. If you get angry, he created you that way. If you get agitated by everything, he made you that way. Don't sugarcoat it. Who created you and me? Is it not him? Do you think he didn't know your attributes, your attitudes, your strongs and your weak points? He knew them all. But when you begin to relate with God with makeup, you will confuse your angels. Ah, they are sent to you who is black. They find you have changed color. This is what happened. The young man was real to himself. That's why he came back to his senses. I said, I need to go back. I know I did a mistake, but that is still my father. Ah. Have you ever realized the more people God's children sin, the more they stay away from God. They don't want to come to God. They want to stay away from church, stay away with anything that is godly. But this son, after he made all the messes, he still found his way back to his father. Why don't you find your way back to your father? That sin that you think you did and is hidden, find your way back to your father. Your father is not judgmental. Your father is not judgmental. I posted something that was paid for by someone on TikTok. For two days it has gained 23,700 views. With 5,600 likes. And most of the people that are commenting and talking, I was showing mama, everyone is, Lord forgive me. Because I have never known how much you love me. But there are also others who are commenting and they are saying, what about God? God? Why are you saying God does not avenge? No, God does not avenge. God is a savior. And if he is a savior, he can't be a savior that is destroying. He can't be two in one. God is not bipolar. Sela. He can't be saving. And on the other hand, he is looking for who to punish. For the same sins he wants to save mankind from. Man is sinning. Man is becoming disobedient. God is looking out to save man from his own disobedience, from his mistakes. And But many are waiting for God to punish men. God destroyed these people. That's why we, we agreed. There are pastors who are trained by Jonah. Their message 
is the message of Jonah. Nineveh, in three days, you will all be destroyed. And when God did not destroy them, he said, God, kill me. Kill me, God. Kill me. If you don't destroy them, they, how will they know I am a prophet? I prophesy their destruction. You are not destroying them. We are in a church whereby people are praying for men to be destroyed by the same God that died for them. Do we know the worth of the blood? The same people you are praying, God destroyed. Anyway, if you have not watched this one, watch the, what was the title of that message? How patient is God? Part one and part two. How patient is God? That's where we got the message of Jonah. Pastors that have been trained by John the Baptist. So they are angry about every person. On Sunday we will be touching on, on it a little bit. It is going to be awesome. Then his son, the son of yours, has thrown away your money. And all shows up and you go all out with a feast. That one. His father said, son, you don't understand. You are with me all the time. And everything that is mine is yours. So wh why the fuss? Why the anger? Because sister so and so testified. Now you are angry with them. Mimi ndio nilikuwa namtafutia bus fare. Mimi ndio nilikuwa namfanyia shopping. Listen, there are people you need to be careful. Inside church, be careful. Let me say this in a parable. You know, in this church, Nicholas, bring that thing down a little bit. In this church, the moment you walk in, do you see people walking outside there? Leave alone the people, maybe someone ch ch checking the children, then they come back. Have you ever seen anyone there? Since, since you, you are not that old. Have you ever seen people stand and go to stay outside there? Sorry? Have you ever seen? Nicholas, have you ever seen whereby members come into church, then uh, Sister Leah, who is a leader, go outside to gist with them? It is impossible. Let me tell you a secret. There's something Papa taught us. I'm so sure you are there. I had not married you, but you are there. In 680 Hotel, we were deep in worship. And um, I began to receive insights about what most people take that moment of worship. You see, like this time whereby choir is ministering, choir is worshiping. Then Nicholas is leading worship. And Leah, who is a leader, or a minister in training picks Anne and they got to just outside there during worship. You remember what Papa taught us that, that service? The importance of the presence of God during worship. You know, I, 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 I've been observing something, not here, and I will not mention where. Whereby during worship, people go to just outside the church. And I say to myself, do we know who we are worshipping? And someone can make you lose everything you came for in a service because they took you outside there. It doesn't matter how important the message is they have for you. The moment the choir said, Let's lift our hands and worship God. Service has automatically begun. I'm helping somebody, trust me. The moment the first prayer was made, service began. The moment Leah said, lift up your voices, let's begin to worship. Very early Sunday morning, service has begun. Have you ever seen me, you, since you came here? I walk out during prayers. I'm the one who sent the prayers. Who guided everything. Me walking out. Where? Because my respect is not to the one stand. It's not to this one. It's to the one they are standing to represent. You see Jason and Daniel outside there. Until <laughs> they're waiting until pastor 
stands in front, then you come in. Let me tell you the honest truth. If you get someone who does that to you, it doesn't matter who they are. Please avoid them. And what did I say? Avoid them. It doesn't matter your title. I, I can never respect you enough to respect God. I have people who have tapped me during worship. The look I gave them was enough to tell them, don't even say what you needed to say. Why? I value God more than what you need to tell me. Leave that thing. Why? Because I know the one I... Imagine you came to service and the service has begun. So you, you know when God moves is when pastor stands. It's not when Mam Lea stands to lead. It's not when Mama stands to lead declarations when service is going on. Okay, continue. But my, my church is avoid such people. And avoid at all cost. The reason I come to church early is not for me to gist with people. I come to church early so that I can prepare myself for the service. God, I know there's something you have in this service. And I know before the end of this service, I'm walking out with a solution. Listen. Oh, we have allies still in churches. They have failed their mandate a long time ago. They can still prophesy. They can still see visions. But the way Mamlea, you are laughing, is it you? Give us. <laughs> Write this. Sons demand what is rightfully theirs. Or rather, sons understand their place of inheritance. And their father agrees to it. Sons understand their place of inheritance and their father agrees to it. Sons make demand for what is rightfully theirs. Servants beg for what is meant to be theirs. When you begin to beg for what is yours, you lower yourself in the category of a servant. Qu question is, do you understand what is yours? Do you know what is yours? Because if you know what is yours, you will demand for it. You will not beg for it. Ecclesiastes, give us very fast. Oh my goodness. Then the last one. Will you allow me to finish the two scriptures? Ecclesiastes and Romans. Then we go. Is that okay? Have you been, are you been blessed? Have you catching light? All right. You will give it to us in amplified message, TLB, GNT and voice in that order. So let's read together. It's just two verses very fast. Everyone, there is an evil I have seen under the sun, like an error which proceeds from the ruler. Continue. Folly is set in many exalted places and in great dignity while the rich sit in humble places. Don't worry, you will understand as we move on. Amplified, everyone. I have seen slaves riding on horses and princesses walking like slaves on the ground. A message, everyone. Here is a piece of bad business I've seen on this earth. An error that can be blamed on whoever is in charge. Meaning, if your pastor does not tell you your place in God, your placement with God. He is denying you a lot of things. We are not called to front ourselves. That's what I will be talking on Sunday. We are called to front Christ. We are not called to explain ourselves. We are called to explain to you Christ. So that Christ is building you to a point whereby you don't need a pastor to explain Bible. Oh, you are not hearing me. You need to be taught Christ to a point it will only take humility to sit under a pastor to listen. But many pastors want to hide everything. 
so that they can be using some scriptures as weapons on you. Do you know the Bible says that? Do you know the Bible says that? <laughs> but people are waking up. Immaturity is given a place of prominence while maturity is meant to, say, to, to take a back seat. Mm, the message Bible, I've seen unproven upstarts riding style while experienced veterans are out to pasture. There is another evil I have seen as I have watched the world go by. A sad situation concerning kings and rulers. This is TLB. Yes, next verse. Next verse. Oh, we have read. For I have seen foolish men given great authority. This one, when God gave it to me, I said, this should be a government scripture. They should read this one. We have seen foolish men given great authority and rich men not given their rightful place of dignity. I have seen, I have even seen servants riding while princesses walk like servants. Next, verse 6. Here is an injustice I have seen in the world. An injustice caused by rulers. Stupid people are given positions of authority while the rich are ignored. <laughs> I have seen slaves on horseback while noble men go on foot like slaves. And the GNT, what does it, oh, that, that was GNT, so the voice, everybody, there is an evil I have seen under the sun. Like an error which comes from ruler's presence. Folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in a low place. I have seen servants on horses and princesses walking on the ground like servants. How are you walking? How are you riding? Where are you seated? Has your place been exchanged? Write this down very fast as we read the final scripture. Sons have a say in the running of their father's empire or kingdom. Slaves only wait to be instructed. Sons have a say. Nicholas, are you listening? Sons have a say in the running of their father's kingdom. Meaning if you are a true son, you don't come to church and you see chairs that are dirty and you are waiting for someone else to clean them. You don't come to church and you see there are bulbs that are not lighting and you are still waiting to be instructed on the same. You are seeing mistakes inside your father's house and you are waiting for someone else to do it for you. Slaves wait for instructions. Sons do what is need, needs to be done. There is a story our grandfather, or rather our father's father in the Lord, Dr. Paul and Angel gave. He said one day he was walking through the compound of the church and he saw some dirt and he bent to pick them. And as he was picking, someone read to him, hey, sorry sir, sorry sir, let me, let me, let me pick it for you. He told him, hey, hold your peace. Pick your own. I'm doing, you are, you are now running to show me. Otherwise, if I matched the trash and passed by, you'd have still followed me. Slaves, servants wait to be instructed. Sons, they do it because it needs to be done. Write this down. The planet will be corrected and fixed by sons. Not friends, not servants. Friends and servants cannot fix the kingdom of their, their God. It's sons, it takes sons to correct and fix the kingdom. 
and um, maybe for a final thing before we read Romans 8 sons have in their heart the things of their father they feel the heartbeat of their father they know what is in the mind of their father sons are in their heart they are in the mind and also they can feel the heartbeat of their father what burdens the father burdens them what moves their father moves them Where, what is a concern in the mind of their father becomes a concern to them then Romans finally 8, 9. Oh, Rada Balagada. Everybody, let's read together. But you are not living the life of the... You are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the spirit. If the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, directs and controls you, but if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He does not belong to Christ. He is not truly a child of God. Give us in KJV. KJV of the same. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Please write this down. It is an insult. I demonstrated this on Sunday. It is an insult for your child to relate with you as a friend. Or as a servant. Do you agree with me? I showcased it. With my daughter wealth. It's an insult. And. I'm walking with wealth. And you meet with us. And you ask wealth. Who is this? And wealth says. This is my friend. It's an insult to me. Then you meet again. With me and wealth again. And wealth. I asked you. Who is this? And wealth says, oh, and this is Pastor Max. It's an insult. But it will bring joy if you meet me with my children and you ask Abia, who is this? And she says, this is my daddy. How do you relate with God? When men ask you, who is God to you? Who do you say yes to you? Who do you say God is to you? Is he a father? Or you say he is a provider? Ah, God is my provider. God is my protector. He is my bouncer. <laughs> God feeds me. He is my chef. Who is God to you? How do you introduce him? when people ask you about him. Imagine my daughter come in and say, Hey, Pastor Max, how are you? It is an insult. She would have better said, Baba Abia. It would have been better. But she will tell me, who, who, who is her father? Are, are you getting me? How is my relationship with this God? Please close your eyes under just one minute and ask yourself that simple question including those of you watching online Lord, how have I been relating with you? Have I been relating with you as a friend or as a servant or as a son? In this kingdom there is no male or female. We are all sons. And if I am a son have I been enjoying my rights? As a slave I know I have been asking for things. I'll be waiting to be instructed. I'll be waiting to be told what to do. How do I tend to the things of the kingdom? Do I tend to the things of the kingdom as a slave, as a friend, or as a son in the kingdom? Who am I 
in his presence. Who is he? In his presence. Jalabarakata zakadaba. Just under one minute. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him and expect a response from him. Who am I, Lord? Who am I? How have I been relating with you? If you realize you have been relating as a friend, as a servant, friends and, and servants don't have exclusive insights to the Father. Lord, I want to have direct insight, direct access to what you have for me. Regedesh Shalabaragada. He calls me his own. He'll never leave me. No matter where I go. I have a father. He calls me his own. I am no labor, Ragada Bada. He never leave me. No matter where. I go He knows my name He knows my every thought And this is each tear the falls and is me when I call. Father, we thank you and we exalt your holy name for, our, for the privilege of being associated with you as children, as sons unto you. Father, where we are lived, where we have acted as slaves and as friends, Lord, we move from that realm. For you have shown us a higher realm where we need to begin to act, to speak, and to relate with you as sons that you have already adopted. Father, we thank you for the word and we thank you for speaking to us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Do we have anyone that has received any insight? Or maybe throughout the week something has resounded with the message that you have received today. Those of you online, you can post your response. Those in the sanctuary, kindly feel free to give your feedback. Today we begin with Jason. So hurry up, Jason. Actually, you answer men first. Or should I say boys first? Because there's a difference between men, boys, and what? Gentlemen. The same way there's a difference between a girl, a woman, and a lady. Which one are you? Sela. Yes, Jason, very fast. Those of you online, kindly let me know. Did you receive anything? Did the message resound with what maybe you have received? Or did you get something that was very, very profound? Yes, Jason, very fast. By the message, because now at least uh, I've stopped looking at myself as a servant. That's right. As a son. Awesome. So I guess that's like the highlight for me. And uh, you know, as much as I have had, so I also teach others. Yes. So, so that others, you know, as a journey, Eh, yeah. God. God did not die for mboches. Yeah. God died for sons. So that he can have sons. Yeah. Awesome. Let's put our hands together for Jason for that. That is very awesome. Yes, John, what, what stood out for you? Amen. Did you, 
Jason switched off the microphone and gave it to you. Praise God. Amen. Be audible for the sake of the people online. I've learned that I'm not a servant, but I am a son of God. Uh, you are a son of God. Awesome. Daniel, umesoma nini? Umejifunza nini? Hata kama umefika wa... Uliko unapisha kindiki? Karibu. <laughs> there, close job, uh -uh, you stand in this place, Oga. Praise God. Amen. And I thank God for the gift you have given me first. Amen. You are in the right place as a son of God. Wow. Your placement is, is better to be in the son category. Yes. Not as the friend yes. and not as the slave. That's very awesome. God bless you, Daniel. Yes, Mam Lea. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, mine, uh, I can say, started when I came. Uh, I was here about 4 o'clock. And yes. I was praying for the service. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's something uh, God put in my spirit that... Uh, the message that is coming forth is going to explain so much where we are at with God. Wow. And when you are teaching, there's something that has come to me clearly that uh, uh, when you are reading the scripture on the, the, the prodigal son, mm -hmm. the son who has always been with the father mm -hmm. was told by his father that all this time you never asked. The things were there and at your disposal. Yes. So uh, when I was coming here and I was thinking about where we are, uh, we are in the month of, um, uh, of November and there are things that we've been trusting God for and mm -hmm. probably some of them have not happened. Yes. And in the service, God was telling me there are some things we have not received because we have had the servant mentality wow. for all this time. Wow. It is there, it is our, at our disposal, and mm. we just have to take, or we just have to know that it is ours for the taking. Yes. It, ha it has been there, and uh, for me, mine, I think that is an answer for me, because when I was coming, it is a new month, God. What do I do? Where mm. am I headed? There are things that you have been uh, telling me, uh, this is what I will do in the whole year. Yes. But uh, I, have I have learned that these things, uh, most of these things have been at my disposal is that I didn't know my place in God as a son wow. to just receive. Wow. Mm. The receiving is called lambano. Lambano is receive. Take it is yours. Awesome. That is good. Good to see you. Yes, mama. Oh, you thought I was In this service, everybody talks. We are sparing Anne because ni mgeni wetu. So yeye ndiye atatufungia. Okay. Um, when we were praying in tongues, mm -hmm. I was taken back to that verse where angels are watching us to be able to understand. And learn. Yeah, and to learn. Oh my goodness. So for me, I'm like, okay, they, they are looking to learn and understand. What. So when I went back to the verse, it was about the inexhaustible riches of Christ which are beyond comprehension. So, to man's mentality, riches will be things. But right. in this service, when you look at us as sons, the inexhaustible riches are knowing myself as a son and that I'm a joint heir, especially wow. that example of being a joint account. I don't need to take permission. Mm -hmm. If I want, I collect. Yeah. So I've even been asking, do I even withdraw? What have I been doing? Uh -huh. yeah. And then I was also on that page of, we're in November. I don't want to do last minute miracle at the no. 11th hour miracle. No. <laughs> what is that all about? You know, yeah, we have everything. So it's not about waiting because the prodigal son had it, but he did nothing. What am I doing with my own? And then I ask even that last question when you asked us, how do we introduce God? If I was to say God is my father, can they relate? Can, can their spirit catch that I truly get that God is my father? Because it's not about the things, because I'll say I'm blessed, I'm what, but it's not about that. It's about how well am I able to communicate my father to them that they can catch him and want him so that they can come into the relationship that I have with Christ. God. Amen. Yeah. And uh, please, can you help me appreciate Nick? Nicholas has been working since morning all through town. And I'm telling you, this young man is a blessing to this community. Now, Mama says,
Uh, what uh, came into my mind when you were preaching, uh, I start so seeing God as my dad, yes. and now I ask myself, if I go tell my dad what I've done wrong, possibility of getting what I want is yes. is Very less, minimal. and I've learned that not to be doing that. <laughs> yeah, so. My, 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 my request is to just go direct and tell God what I want and pop. It will come. Yeah. Let's say, that's why I told you I, I am trusting God maybe before December we will do the series on how to deal with sin consciousness. Because that has denied. We have done it in at the primary. But there's nothing old with the Bible. It is the same Bible till Christ comes. So we are not in a hurry to finish syllabus. We are not in a hurry to finish the text called Bible. We want to understand. Because most people are going to God with sin consciousness. That Luke will be part of it. We will see the mentality of God when you approach him. You are his child, but you have already seen. But because of how we grew with our parents, how we grew with our mothers, we knew that if I have wronged, I will be reprimanded, beaten, ostracized, okay, my goodness, ostracized, ostracized, sidelined, looked at as a black sheep. Everyone will not want me. And we have brought the same mentality. That's why we cannot relate with God because of where we are coming from. We think God is like our father, our mothers. Yes, thank God for them. They instill discipline to us. But God is not doing that. Otherwise, we, if God is doing what they do, he is looking out to punish you for your sin. He is looking out to tighten things because you have your mistakes. He is looking out to shame you in front of everybody. He is looking out to take away your job, take away your marriage, take away everything about you. That's why most people have devised ways of collecting money through the desperation they have preached to so many people. Our father is different. So please help us to understand who is my father? Who is my father? That way you will not need any pastor to explain to you your relationship with your father. I know him. You can tell me he's angry with me. I will tell you to your face. My God is not angry with me. Yes, everything I'm doing looks like he is angry with me. But my father is saying, my child is growing up. And I knew this face of his life even before he came to me. My daughter is still gaining strength. Yes, they are missing. Everybody can see it. Well, how, how is your relationship? Please, all of you, if you can go and rewatch that message, knowing God as a father is on YouTube. Yes, give Anne a good microphone. Let her say hi to us. Then, uh, of course, yes, of course, she does. She does. Ah, uh, is they did not switch it on for you. Karibu sana an. I think for me the first thing the message did was it reminded me of my first love with God. Wow. Wow. When you first get saved, you are you're like a child. Yes. So it reminded me of my first love with the Father. Yes. And it also brought healing because started off by saying that Satan distorts your identity. Yes. So when he distorts your identity, it will definitely affect your relationship. Your relationship, yes. So those were the number one, number two, number three was the consciousness of a son yes. and a servant. Yes. So how you see God and your place in God determines like what Mama was saying, I'm a joint heir. So yes. how many things am I missing out because of my consciousness of, as a son mm. and being a servant? Yes. And of course, I was leaning more on the servant side. Yes. And then thirdly was when you were speaking about your daughters, mm. God was giving me examples of my relationship with my own father. Yes. We are three girls. Mm -hmm. When I want to ask my dad for anything, there's no... Protocol. Yeah, no protocol. Yes. Just ask him. Yes. And uh, just
since that relationship we had, God was just showing me, and in the course we were talking about the prodigal son, he was not even bothered about what the son had done, what he had lost. He was just so happy that the son had come back. Yes. So, and then there was also rebuke, which I thank God, because it took me back to my first love. Yes. Where nothing, like it is God and God alone. Yes. It doesn't matter who it is. You know, when you're talking about worship. Yes. <laughs> Let me confess. But <laughs> 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 I think that was for me because wow. it reminded me where I was and where I should be with God. Mm. That nothing or anyone takes his place. Exactly. And just, that's what I'm saying. There are many things, but one of them was worship. Worship. I'm telling you that. Like that. Wow. Can we put our hands to wait and tell us how did you? This is uh, your first time here. This is my first time here. How do you see our mini us? I don't see mini. Uh huh. Thank you. This is global. Amen. <laughs> and um, I've enjoyed the service. Amen. Uh, I didn't know it was this close to where I live. Yes. Fridays, please make time. Yes. We will be expecting you. And thank you for the invitation. Karibu sana. God bless you. Thank you so much. Bring your sister along. I, I, I received an instruction. I'll talk to you about it. Yes. Don't worry. I'll talk to you about it. That connects you and Mamlea. It connects you with Mamlea. So get her number before you leave. Is that okay? Oh, you have it. Ah, awesome. Awesome. No problem then. Thank you so much. Let's see the people online. Do we have any comments from the people online? My goodness, we are way past our time. Uh -huh. it, is, it is well. Jason, I'm waiting for you. Those, those online. Angel Queen. Angel Queen, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Jerry, Jerry God bless you. Thank you so much. Jerry, I have received... Jerry sent me a cup of water. I have seen it. God bless you. Emanatsu. Uh, that's Emanuela. God bless you. Emanuela, how are you doing? And uh, I hope you are almost finishing to come back home. Producer Ricks. Producer Ricks. That's Eric. God bless you, Eric. Thank you. I saw your message. Anyone else? And do we have any comment? Anyone who has commented anything? So that we don't leave them out. All right. If there's no, no comment, God bless you. See you on Sunday very early at 9. We will be here. Of course, one hour of tanging, one hour of, of glory. We will pray. Then the service begins from 10 all the way to 1. And uh, as you have, you have noticed, we are keeping time by all means. So we are not extending and we will not be extending. Is that okay? So we try to see if we can finish the series that we are doing. I don't know how many people are enjoying it, but me, I'm enjoying the series. It's really blessing me, and uh, it is opening me up to greater depths of understanding my God. And uh, I hope it will do the same to you. So God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in. Let's give our offerings. If you are, those of you online, you can give through the m -Pesa. And uh, those in the church, if you're giving cash, you can drop in the cash box. And uh, I'm so sure we are going to be blessed. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. On Friday, we will ensure we'll try to finish exactly at 7.30. We began a little bit late because we had our instruments uh, they had an issue. You can see we just purchased a new power regulator, which is not costing uh, small money. And uh, Mama has helped so much in ensuring Pastor does not have migraine, thinking what to do. Because uh, she is part and she is my.